Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll be working through an example of computing the torsion of a circular trajectory. So here we have our circular trajectory, pretty standard. Um, and we want to calculate torsion of this thing. So before we do that, right, as I always recommend, it's good to first make a prediction for what the unit binormal vector will be and the torsion. Remember, that's the derivative with respect to arc length of the unit binormal vector. So let me jump back to our, uh, our circular trajectory here. So I have the oscillating plane pictured. I also have n, t, and b, our unit, uh, unit vectors, right? Unit tangent, unit normal, and unit binormal. So we want to, we want to make a conjecture here about what is b and what is the derivative of b with respect to arc length. So b seems to be pointing upward. I think in the last video I mentioned that a good guess for this is just our unit coordinate vector k because it's just pointing in the positive z direction and has unit length. So it should just be k. And then I'll let you conjecture what is the derivative of that unit binormal vector. How does it change over time? What is db ds? Is it changing? Those are the things to ask yourself. And then let's go ahead and calculate this. So keep that, keep that prediction you have in mind while we calculate, um, calculate B and the torsion. So remember that torsion, we have this formula for torsion. Um, it's db ds dot n gives us negative torsion. So in order to calculate torsion, we're going to need to find B and we're going to need to find n. And then we'll take a derivative of b with respect to arc length and take a dot product with our unit normal vector. So we're going to have to get a hold of both of those quantities. And remember that b, our unit binormal vector, is t cross n. So we're also going to need to get a hold of t. This is what I mean. So calculating torsion is a very multi-step process. So it's important to break it down into what you need. We need t, we need n, um, and then we'll need dbds. Okay, so let's first find t. So we'll find v first. So let's see, v of t is minus r uh, sine t. So part of this calculation we've done many times now. Uh, minus r sine t, uh, r cosine t. That's v. Magnitude of v, that's our speed, will be r. I'm not going to show that calculation because we've done that uh, many times before. It's just r. Um, and then, so we want to get a hold of t. So that's t, remember, is v over magnitude v, right? It's a unit vector in the direction of velocity. And so that's just minus sine t, cosine t. That's our t, and we also have to get a hold of, of n, and let's remember what n is. How do we get a hold of n? n is dt t divided by magnitude of dt. So let's go ahead and take a derivative of t here. So dt t will be minus cosine t and minus sine t. Magnitude of that is 1. And so n, maybe I'll write that here, magnitude of dt t, 1. And so n, then, is just dt dt. It's minus cosine t minus sine t. All right, so now we have t, we have n. We can calculate their cross product to get b. Remember, our guess for b is it looked like it was just the unit coordinate vector k. 
But let's go ahead and calculate B now. We need to do a cross product between T and N. So B, T cross N. So we're going to compute a determinant. So this is determinant I, J, K. And then remember what to do if we just have two coordinates. If we just have an X and a Y component to our vectors, we just let the third component be zero. Right, we just drop it down into the xy plane. So this is minus sine t, cosine t, zero. That's t, and then n was minus cosine t, minus sine t, zero. Let's go ahead and calculate that determinant. When I do the i component, I'll get a zero here, right? So zero in the i. When I do the j component, I'll get minus sine t times zero minus zero times minus cosine t, I get zero again. So the only non-zero uh, direction for this vector is the k direction. So k, uh, I do minus sine t times minus sine t, that's sine squared t, minus cosine t times negative cosine t. So that's gonna be plus cosine squared t. And that's in the k direction. And that's, right, sine squared plus cosine squared is just one, and so we just get out the unit coordinate vector k. Or if we want to think about it in component form, our unit binormal vector is 0, 0, 1, and that matches up with our prediction. So that's cool. And now if we take a derivative of b with respect to arc length or time, we should get 0. And that is because this is a constant vector, right, constant. So it has zero derivative. So db ds then is equal to the zero vector. Um, so what that means is, so uh, what scalar multiple is it of n? Remember that's how torsion is defined is db ds is some scalar multiple of n. Well, because it's the zero vector, that scalar multiple must be zero. So this tells me that tau, without even having to do that dot product, I can see already that tau, our torsion, must be exactly zero. So unit normal vector B is just K, and the torsion for the, uh, for the circular trajectory is zero. And again, so let me jump back to the figure one last time. This osculating plane is not changing. At all times, the osculating plane is the xy plane. And so the unit, norm, uh, unit binormal vector b, uh, the direction of the osculating plane is not changing. Remember, that's what b is telling us is the direction of that plane. So b is not changing, and so torsion is zero. And so this osculating plane, we don't move out of the osculating plane. It stays the same throughout the entire trajectory. So a much more interesting problem we'll be determining this torsion for, say, a helix, which is the subject of the next video. We'll run through an example of computing torsion for this helix. If you'd like, uh, and I think it's a good idea, try and do this on your own first, if you haven't yet. Try doing it on your own first, and then go through the video uh, and see if you make any mistakes along the way. That's my recommendation. I'll see you there.